Yes. Uh, I don't have the camera. I'm not US citizen and it really put me in trouble. I think that uh, it's a. Uh, I don't know any, any, any social movement that has been done by the majorities in the whole planet, in whatever society, in whatever historical period. It's a small group of individuals do that. And I think that it's very important to document that, to recognize that. Uh, because, in fact, we are informed. We are informed about all kinds of work. We are informed about all kinds of social failures. And we are really never informed, educated, documented. Uh, like, in fact, we are successful too. Because that's the only reason because humanity is still alive is because there are, there are some groups of people that move to social movements. And I think that the, uh, it is, uh, we don't learn that in the schools, we don't learn in any single place. And, and it sounds very easy to say, and myself do, I am a teacher, and all the time I say, uh, I teach different content that never will be recognized in the schools and never will be published either, but uh, still be the most important messages to bring. And another thing is that, uh, I think that the U.S. was born as an imperium. It's, it's a country, like, I don't know any single country that has not oppressed a group of people in order to be up. And so, uh, no, it's a myth that some societies have money because, why? It's because we have money because we oppress others. It's, a, it's there, and I just feel that it's, a, it's not bad to recognize that, but it is very dangerous to erase the history uh, because uh, guns are one of the big business in this country. It's a complete business. There are families that live by selling guns. There are people that make business uh, selling guns. And uh, I'm Mexican, and there is a complete war in Mexico where we are buying all the US guns in order with the excuse to kill the drug dealers. Uh, but it's like some kind of uh, um, September 11, and I'm very respectful to the U.S. society about it because, in fact, it was a very painful uh, event that was created uh, absolutely for the kind of political strategies that uh, politicians do. But uh, to me as Mexican, also, this is the first time that I'm not able to ask people to do something because the pain is so much. It's like uh, it's like here uh, when I see my students in King State College that they lose the semester because they are in service. It's painful, and that is the majority of people too. Because totally, I agree with all the reasons that you say: propaganda, destruction, etc., etc. But also, it's the majority of families that are really, really damaged by losing a husband, losing a grandson, a granddaughter, because you know, it's like some women fight to be in the army, is like, that is a, a, a big part of the US feminism, like, I'm a woman, I have the right to drop a bomb. It's, yes. like, it's like, yeah, it's like, okay, women are funny people too, like, we need to copy men, and, and it's a, all that kind of contradictions, but uh, it's a concrete business. US wars are business. Okay. Create money, create industry, and the economy of this country is damaged, and I think that that can be seen as a blessing if we really want to finish in fact in areas, or just we need to find the next business to create the next uh, huge capitalistic thing. But uh, uh, I think that it, it's hard to talk yeah. about it, and that is why uh, I'm, I'm a legal resident, but I'm not a US citizen, yeah. and so I came here because I, I have good friends here, but uh, being a person of color in heat is not easy, and absolutely yeah. these kind of things cannot be said in, in many places, because I'm Mexican, but to the police, you know, he and I'm from the Middle East. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very big part of New Hampshire's industry, and a lot of people are not aware of that. It isn't the largest industry, apparently the largest industry in New Hampshire is healthcare, yeah. but it's probably the second largest of 
industry. Yes. I, I think we put up with uh, war in this country because it's remote. It's, uh, it's abstract, it's far away. Our uh, soldiers are all professionals, yeah. they aren't drafted. And many of our military operations are really um, car carried out by civilians. Yeah. They yes. support people. Sure. But you know, during the Vietnam War, Vietnam was very far away too. And in those days, there wasn't as much information coming from from say internet sources, you know, uh, there wasn't as much possibility of finding out what was really going on as there is today. Today, we we can see every we can read foreign newspapers every day uh, online and find out what's happening in other places. There's so much information. There's no excuse to be isolated and not see what's going on there. Well, and I want to throw out the notion, too, that it's not just the war that we are silent about. We're silent about many things that are in our best interest. Healthcare, for example, um, the way the Wall Street got the bailouts. I think we have a habit in this country of just being, feeling like we need to exercise our democracy every two years or every four years, but we really have to turn over, especially now that Obama has been elected. Probably many of you know I didn't vote for him. But um, we need to be active uh, more than just every two or four years. And we need to be in the, out in the streets. The military issues that you so eloquently and um, delightfully explained are related to the financial oppression that also affects this country. Yes, I, I certainly agree. But again, you say people are silent about these other issues. I'm actually looking at the people who are not silent about those other issues, the people who are the activists, the people who are you know, civil rights advocates, health care advocates, uh, progressive people, is, mm -hmm. are, I feel are very silent about war. They'll talk about almost anything else. Carol. Um, there's a couple of related thoughts. First, I wanted to say I really appreciate Will's comments because I think one of the reasons um, people are silent is something that certainly has, uh, you know, uh, that I could identify with is either despair, you know, succumbing to despair yeah. or being afraid that one might succumb to despair. Yeah. So there's a tendency or for me to tune out things if I think that's going to take me to that place. So I think anything that can be done that can publicize how actions can make a difference, yeah. or having a difference, like you just stated, yeah. is very helpful. But also a couple of points on um, some of the, the points you raised regarding Medicare and Social Security. I don't think the issue is so much that people are silent because they're grateful to have it, but that it so dominates our political discourse in terms of who's trying to take it away, um, what will happen if people lose their Medicare or Social Security, that it keeps people in this state of fear, and if people are focused on survival, they can't really focus on anything yes. higher. Well, I, I, um, yeah, I fear I, I, I'm sure it's part of it, but I also think there's something else happening, which is a kind of gratitude to the federal government that dispels any thought about all the other things in the federal government. I'm just. I, I'm not sure that this is the case. I don't have any statistics on this, but it might, there might be something to this. And you know, the libertarians always raise this issue that all the federal, all the federal welfare system makes people passive, and I think there's some truth to that. Well, but I'm not sure they're passive. I guess well, I would in, say in some of your rights, people are active and focused on certain yeah. issues. But I think that goes back too to what information is readily and easily available through the media sources that most people rely on. Yeah. So when you look at election coverage, yes. it's all about Medicare, yeah. Social Security, certain issues, yeah. and some of the issues you're talking yeah. about take much more effort yeah. to even find media yeah. sources. So I think whatever can be done yeah. to publicize, yeah. and also just one other thing on, um, you know, when you said so much is available through the internet, there's a flip side of that which is that a huge reason, I think, for the distraction of many people is 
um, the addiction to electronic yes, I, I devices, did, I did mention constant that bombardment mm -hmm. that makes it yeah. impossible or very difficult yeah. to discern what is reliable, yeah. what isn't, yeah. how do you um, create yeah. a space to be able to see yeah. and hear and appreciate the news yeah. that is accurate and is important. <coughs> I, I agree, but but you see, one of one of the things I've really been disturbed about is if, if you get I get the American Friends Service Committee literature all the time, and and it's about immigrant rights and a lot of other issues. I would expect an organization like that to have more of an anti-war stance. And in fact, in, in the, during the Vietnam War period, the mainstream <coughs> clergy were very concerned about the war. They were able to speak out. They, now, even the Unitarians, kind of wishy-washy on this. They're not screaming. The, the UU the Service Committee does, you know, feeds the people in, I don't know. <laughs> but you know, it, it, I would I would expect outrage, and I'm talking about from people who know how to use the internet. They know what how to find good sources. They're not normally passive at all politically. They're speaking out on things, but this issue, very quiet about. And that of course goes through the UCC for for many of them. The Catholic Church was very active in the 1970s and even the 1980s on anti-war and all kinds of social justice issues. Yes? I, 